I studied sculpture and I was always interested in the line between fine art and craft. So a lot of my work was using traditional craft methods. And then when I left art college, my work got naturally smaller and smaller because of constrictions on space. And I looked for a trade where I could make a living making things and jewellery was a natural fit. I start with an initial idea that comes from a form or a texture. I do loads of walking on the cliffs, on the beaches, picking up found objects. I look at colour, form, texture. I do lots of drawing, photographs, and just sort of collate lots of visual information. And then I make a basic model in metal. So I don't, I don't start by drawing a finished piece. It has quite an organic process. It evolves as I go along. A lot of customers bring to me their heirloom jewellery that they've inherited, they don't particularly like the style of, and I take out the stones, melt down the gold, and then redesign them something. My work's a lot about wanting to have something that's really low-key, understated, but with a luxurious touch. So it's important that it's work that you can wear within a Cornwall lifestyle. I've always got a few pieces on the go because I feel like it's really important to come back and look at things every day and just reassess what I've done. And because jewellery is so tiny, just the slightest curve in the wrong place, the next day can really stand out. The nice thing about metal is that although it's small and it looks delicate, you can really hammer it. You do have to force it to do what you want to do. I use a piercing saw. I solder, I use files, hammers, grinding tools, polishing tools, and then filing gives it its final finish. So the end product is luxurious, it's quite shiny, transactional, but all of the materials I use come from the ground, and that's always been really important to me. That's something about Cornwall that I really love, that we're surrounded by this mining heritage. I mainly work with sapphires, they come in every colour of the rainbow. So I was really inspired to go and see where they come from. I didn't want to lose sight of that connection to the earth. So I went to Sri Lanka and found mines, got to know the miners, and saw sapphires coming from the ground. And since then I built up a really trusted network of suppliers and mine owners, and I get back every year. If I go direct to source, then I can bring back much more unusual colours that haven't been treated. And it's nice to see where they come from. It's nice for my customer to know the provenance. Sometimes I can even say, I know the man that found this. I was looking to find a space to have a showroom of the jewellery. And the high street in Falmouth is full of independent shops, independent makers. So when this shop came up, we were really excited and delighted. It's the first time actually that I've met my customer. It has helped me evolve. Before I was always tucked away on my own just making and this time I get to see people's reaction when they come in to see me working in here. I think it helps them understand that it is all handmade. It gives them a connection to it which is important.